David in Crow Wing County, Minnesota. Boy, that sounds very Native American-ish, right? Crow Wing. Love it. Um, could you please discuss what makes transmission line speakers unique as well as why this technology is rarely used these days? Okay, sure. I'm not our resident speaker guru. That's uh, Chris Brunhaver, who's the designer of our beautiful FR30 loudspeakers. But I know I knows a few things, and so transmission line speakers kind of were popular. Um, uh, you know, Bud Freed, uh, Freed Audio, I think was the name of it. Great guy. He was a huge fan of transmission line speakers, and uh, my former partner, the person Stan Warren that I started this company with. He built his own transmission line loudspeaker. And basically, here's the thing. If you have a loudspeaker in a box, there's a couple of ways you can get bass perfected in that box, okay? And the standard box is a sealed box. That's a cabinet, it's got a woofer, it's sealed, the woofer does what it does, you get the bass response that you get, okay? The second way of doing it, probably the most popular, the most ubiquitous, is a ported loudspeaker. Now, a port is basically a tuned hole in the cabinet, and I, I would have to have Chris come and explain technically how that all works and why it all works. But basically, as, as the woofer goes down and we, we reach a point of box resonance, the, 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 the part inside of the cabinet that, where the impedance goes up and we start, we, we go up like this and then it starts falling off, the bass response starts falling off like a stone. If you put a properly tuned port, a hole, in the box, and you've seen ports before, no doubt. It's in the, usually in the back, sometimes in the front, sometimes down firing, but typically back here, you, you just see an opening in the back like that. And that extends the base by giving some of the back pressure in the sealed box a chance to get out at certain frequencies. And you can actually get a heck of a lot more base than if you didn't have a port. Because in a sealed box, there you're going to have to do other things in the crossover to force that driver to do what it doesn't naturally do in order to get bass. Okay? The other thing you can do is use a passive radiator. And that's what this is. And this is a, a fancy port. The advantage of this, it's a lot more expensive because, I mean, it's actually like a driver. And it does its thing at the same place that a port would, but it does it where it's in phase where it's more additive, sounds better, all that kind of good stuff, but it's more expensive. A port's a hole, so that's kind of cheap, right? The problem with a port, for the most part, is what comes out of the port is out of phase from the front. And hopefully, if you tune it all right, by the time it all gets around to you, it's additive rather than subtractive. Because as we remember, when we have two signals that are out of phase, they cancel each other. So a transmission line has the woofer, say up here, or it could be down there, wherever, wherever it may be. And what we want to do is make, for the back pressure of the woofer, we want to make a tunnel for it to travel through so that when it comes out of that port, it's in phase. And we do that because as we remember, sound travels about one foot per second. So if we can extend the time it takes for that back wave to get out of the hole, as opposed to just direct, you know, here's the woofer and here's the hole. If we make it run around like that, we wind up, if properly designed, an in-phase port. And that's what a transmission line does. It, it, the sound is transmitted through this maze, if you will. Bose uses it. There's a lot of companies that use it. You don't see it much today because it's, there's a lot of cabinetry to build in that thing, a lot of structure, and there's probably better ways. This is a better way to do it and less expensive than a transmission line. So hope that answers your question. All right. Thanks. Talk to you later. Bye.